All right, what's going on, everybody? Welcome to a game day, Oilers and Stars. Tonight, it's a big one, and uh, we're looking forward to setting this bad boy up for you. If you're watching over on YouTube, hammer the thumbs up. Give us your thoughts and predictions for this game. We will uh, get into that as we continue to work our way through the oil stream today. Oil stream, as always, brought to you by our great partners over at Boston Pizza, the New York Sicilian Square Footer. Uh, the Meat Lovers one hits. You like the buffalo chicken? I like both of them. They're both good. Yeah. I could go for one right now. Are you a hungry boy, Tom? I'm a hungry boy. Did you have any of those uh, snacks that were dropped off a little bit? Whoever Did dropped you? them off, thank you. Can those I those looked really good, didn't they? Were they? Delicious. I had a half slice of that cheesecake. Mm. I almost wanted to eat the full cheesecake, but I was like, that's a real prick move. So Why? I sliced. Wow. Well, I mean, other people might want part of that Why, cheesecake. Aren't you a hungry boy? Yeah. I had a couple of leftover turkey buns in my lunch today that my oh. wife packed for me. So I wasn't, uh, I wasn't that hungry. Okay. But. I'm always going to try to eat cheesecake. So I, I had it, good. and it was good. I don't even know where it's from. But uh, thanks to Josh, who dropped those off. Is it? Is it? Yeah. Oh, I didn't see anything on the box. It's like on the sticker. With oh, the, the I was, sticker you know, has you know what happened? That it. makes sense, because yeah. I opened them up. I was like, look at these bloody things. They're delicious. Good cannolis in there. And uh, I didn't look at the sticker on the box, because I was tearing into it like a savage. So mm. I didn't even think about that. Man, Italian Center Shop does it again. Mm, that's good. Straight from the uh, straight from the Nielsen show. Mm, that is good. Yeah. Uh, all right. Let's uh, let's keep these rolling in and keep those messages coming in. And uh, oh man, Zulu says fantasy hockey playoffs finals for three hundred and fifty bucks. I need a goalie. Do I pick up Pickard? He's going tonight. I mean, Ooh. I don't play that. I don't play that week to week fantasy hockey stuff. That's tough. My hockey pools are all draft the team, yeah. kind of leave it for the season and, and go from there. But I'm on the verge of winning both. Shocker. Yeah. Uh, the one league, the one pool, I'm looking for a three-peat. Four of the last five. The only year I didn't win, I lost by like 18 points. It's a Connor McDavid special. I've had McDavid in that league since Day one. he came into the league. Damn. And uh, we've, we're, now, we're like 12 years in. This will be my seventh title. I've absolutely owned these guys. I've built like the greatest hockey pool team in the history of hockey pools. And I, I trade guys away every year because I trade all my picks. Yeah. And then throughout the year, like for example, if one of my guys gets hurt, I try to move him for so this year I traded Kyle Connor when he was hurt. Yep. In a package to get Sidney Crosby and Jesper Bratt and it worked out really well. Very a nice. bunch of picks and stuff. Are you saying due to your keeper league success? Yes. That <laughs> potentially you could be an assistant general manager in the National Hockey League. I'm gonna say this. No comment. <laughs> no comment. I th I I think that's kind of a ridiculous premise. I know someone I, who I does. Know where you're going with this. But uh, I'm not. I'm not unwrapping that uh, that cannoli today. Is that what happens? Do you unwrap cannolis or cannolis? No, wrap? you just bite into them. Oh, anyway, I'm not biting that cannoli today. Mm -hmm. uh, Oilers and a Dallas Stars tonight, and uh, Boston Pizza presenting sponsor here of the Oil Stream. And you can text us anytime seven eight zero two one eight ninety nine ninety nine. And I love it. Like, look, we can get to a lot of your questions. We can always dive into questions. We got a game to set up. We'll get to the line combinations for tonight. As well, uh, we'll certainly go there. I'm looking at my computer here, moving this mouse around. I was like, my mouse isn't working properly, but it was just because I wanted to. Uh, I'm messing around on the uh, the main screen over there. I have the power. See, boom! I just changed the graphic. Very cool, right? Oh, really nice. nice. Yeah. Yeah. Did, are you just noticing that now for the first time? Um, I've been doing it for eight months. No, I know you do that. Okay. That's why you have two mice. By the way, your hair is on point today. Thank you. It looks real nice. Thank you. I know usually your hair looks good, but I don't like notice it. But today, your hair looks good. Thank you. High and tight today. You look like that guy. What guy? The black shirt, the blonde hair, the cartoon guy. Johnny Bravo. Jo is that Johnny Bravo? I don't yeah, know what show he's from. I don't know where I'm he's assuming. from. I'm assuming. But that's, yeah, that's kind of what you look like. He talks like Elvis? I don't know. I've never listened to him. I just see a picture of him. He's got bright blonde hair, black shirt. Kind of a strong jawline like you, Tommy Gazzola. Bless you. You look very much. You know Johnny Bravo over here. Thank you. Dustin Nielsen. Normal, average looking dude. And Johnny Bravo. Stop it. So that's uh, Stop it. That's good. Now you're going to chop me down after building me up. I love this. Chris from Fort Max says, guys, I got my Italian center shop panino for lunch. Ooh. Mm, that's good. Uh, it is good. And you can probably have part of it for dinner because nobody's eating one of those I things for lunch. I was thinking about doing that today. Stupid. But we have the well, we got meeting. Me, but we, we got some paninos over there. Maybe we should cut it up. If you want to slices. If boys want to cut up one, you can cut one up. Because then tonight it's at Hudson's, West Ham Mall. Yes. I'll have a bite there. Eric says he might be coming out. Eric is a big Bourbon Street Hudson's guy. I know, and he's he's yeah he's grown. Eighty percent. He's an eighty percent chance. That's oh, a good chance. Okay, good. I, I'm 
I'm gonna co- I'm gonna go early, and then you and I can have a bite to eat together. And, and that's then a thumbs you, up. Eric usually likes to leave like before the game even starts. No, I know. Yeah, it's because good. he's got to be up early in the morning. He's a busy boy. Yeah, yeah, well, it, it is true. We start very early around here. We do. Uh, all right, let's get to some of your questions. We'll set up this game uh, tonight as well. We'll go with Mo. Mo over in the nasty chat says, "What up, gentlemen?" Question for you. With all the talk regarding 29's contract status, two is also eligible for an extension this summer. Is it realistic that the Oilers get both deals done? Hello, Mo. Good to hear from Mo. Um, my inclination would be no. You're not. You're saying this summer, not yeah, this ever, summer. Obviously, not not. Could they tackle one of them? Maybe. Uh, I. Th- my feeling, talking to people, is that Dry Saddle is gonna see how things are going next year. What is? It? What do you mean? Like, it, it, I've my understanding is like he. It, there's an assumption he's not even a hundred percent sure what what he wants to do. Okay. And he's, he, so we've what, seen like, what does he need play to, it right. What does he need to see? I don't know. I, I'm, I'm just, just saying, I'm, like, not, I'm totally not. Like, I'm not going to criticize because like that's not, his right. But I'm wondering, like. What does he need there, to there see are, next year? Okay, there are those people that I had this conversation last week with a couple of people that came in visiting media, very well connected, that say they think he's going. They think he's leaving? They And I was like, Come no, on. he's not going. Like, relax, because you're going to just create panic. And then there's others that that think he's staying 100% sure. And then when I bounce it off, some people, it's like, you know what? He probably isn't too sure yet. Yeah. Or he's not giving up. He's not giving away anything. He's saying he's playing it down the middle. All right, well, we ripped off this, uh, this it's contract band It's way band-aid. too early to say. It, it is early. That's what I'm saying. But we've ripped off this contract band-aid now, so let's just continue with the conversation. For Leon, I mean, I, anybody. This is not just Leon Drysdale. This would be anybody. You're looking at how much money you can get. Yeah. You're looking at the team that is around you and if you're close to winning. Unless you're Johnny Gaudreau and you just want to go and run and hide somewhere. And you would also, I think, look at lifestyle and, and, and where you live. Um, does he get more money somewhere else than here? I just have a hard time believing Daryl Cates will be outbid on a Leon Dreisaitl contract. I think like, the, the vault will be open for him. That's why here, I said 15. Here. Yeah. Yeah. He'll get whatever the money is. He'll get it here. He can get an extra year here. Yeah. So the money... Check that box for the Edmonton Oilers, okay? Check it. Yes. Check. Check. Contender. Being on a contender. With Connor here, check. That's a check. I mean, how many places will be able to pay him the $15 million or whatever and also say, we're a Stanley Cup contender too? Most of those teams that we would already view as a Stanley Cup contender have their big money guys in place. Yes. So I think the Oilers provide him the best chance to win a Stanley Cup too. So correct. Check. I'm of the mind that that is the case. So what was the other factor that I said? Living oh, here, l- lifestyle, lifestyle. Uh, I mean, can, Edmonton's can I not going to win this? that battle a lot. I mean, the I bottom say, line. Yeah, you're not. But his work year, being here, he's he's traveling around, and yes, he's got his girlfriend, all that. But by all accounts, all the wives and girlfriends seem to get along very well, and they take vacations when it gets really cold. And they have uh, yeah. they have the ability to do that and the means to do that, and that's kind of one of the perks of being with uh, a star athlete is you could go when it gets to minus forty. Like it's not hard to get the hell out of here for a week, and then when you come back and it's mild, it's all, all good. Um, and then his girlfriend, who he's with right now, she's obviously very busy on in her own right, which is great. So it's not like she has to be in Edmonton all the time. On top of that, Leon who is European, has his place in Europe, has his place here, has a place in Ontario, has a place, I I think, down in California as well. Um, It's, I think it comes down to ability to win. Do you get paid what you you deserved and owed? uh, What you deserve and are owed? And I think that's, and the answers to those are yes. My inclination, Inclination would be he would want to stay here. Yeah, the only the, the if he leaves 
there'll be full blown panic that McDavid's going somewhere else too. Right? Like that's like it would be natural. I can't be even full, imagine what the that fact would be that like. We're talking about two years I or a year early is uh, a year early now. It's not like four years down. We the were road talking about it on. last summer too. Anyway, it. Mo, thank you for the question, but no, I don't think that both get done this summer. Well, the Bouchard one's interesting because on, on Bouchard, so let's say he wants to get paid this summer. And you're to me, like next year isn't going to be his offensive season this year has been so good that I don't know how next year's would actually top it. So I don't think like, oh, lock him in now because next year he's gonna blow you out of the water and you're gonna have to pay even more. I think whatever you'd be paying Bouchard this summer, yeah. you're just paying him probably close to the same amount next summer. Probably. Anyway. How much better is right? you're going to be? That's the thing. I, I, I don't see him Quinn Hughesing it up and being a 90 to 100 point guy. He's not going to Roman Yossi this thing. What's he going to finish? He's going to finish somewhere around 80 points this year, right? Who's that? Bouchard. Bouchard, yeah. Well, Which is see. amazing. Yeah, I mean, it's a ridiculously high number. Yeah. But and he'll get paid like, for the offensive elements of his game. Like it reminds me a little bit of Brent Burns. Remember Burns? He was on some great teams. It took him a little while to get there because they were moving him between <laughs> well, he got forward moved and around. defense. Don't bring up Burns because there are people texting him being like, "You're right. They should try Bouchard on the wing." You know what I mean? There's oh, always no, those, he doesn't have always the those same psychos. offensive. Yeah, <laughs> he, no. No, that's not the the psychos. Different Did build. you call them psychos? Well, I mean, there are people who are psychos. They're like, play guard on nurse on the wing. You crazy bastards! No. Come on. I'll call them not psychos. Well, I, I'll say I they're the out term, there. I use the term psychos loosely. I, I know. I'm not thinking you they're don't serial mean killers that. here, but you don't I mean, mean that. To they might be besmirch their character. No, no, psycho in a good way. Okay, like psycho in a man. This guy's a psycho way. Not holy smokes, this guy's a psycho. Like that's that's not uh, that's not what I'm talking about. Uh, so, yeah, I just don't think Bouchard costs you a crazy amount more next year as opposed to if you get the deal done this year, I guess. But it is April 3rd. They're in the middle of a push towards the playoffs, which could turn into a Stanley Cup run. Mm -hmm. I don't think we need to spend more than the time that we've already spent talking about the contracts. Kind of got out of the way. Answer yes, both questions. Yes. And uh, yeah. we can probably move forward. Uh, the Die A over in the Nasty Chest says, Hey, Dustin Nielsen, can you please read my text? The, yeah, but your text the, is about the lock shop, man. I can't get to that now. The Die A. Yeah. His texts are out there. Yeah, they're all kind of all over the place. And your your text is kind of meant for hustling on the lock shop. And this is the oil stream, so I probably won't get to uh, probably won't get to uh, to that one. Uh, Nelly, Nelly Nenderson says, uh, Guys, one, there are many teams that would pay dry settle and move everything to do so. So... Can you imagine in some sick world where down the road McDavid and Drysdale are facing off against each other in a playoff series? I don't oh. think it's going to happen, but that's that's unbelievable. It just it can't happen. There's no way. Uh, Oilers can't fumble this one. You got to keep these guys around. No. That's, a, that's 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 there's, it. There's other pieces that you can trade to make the cap space work and make sure what, there's money. What if somebody said this will come down? And I don't think it'll come down to this. But some people were saying, I think in the nasty chatter on the text line. This will come down to what happens in the playoffs this year. If, um, if they, that's, that does factor in. And and a couple of years ago, after the first round loss, and, and obviously the year prior to that, the not even qualifying for the round of 16 in the bubble, there was some frustration. But the last two years has kind of, from my understanding, solidified the belief in what this group has. Especially from those two pillars on the team. Yeah. They know they're right there. They are. I mean, they're, they're right they're, there. And I don't know how much of a better opportunity they're ever going to get elsewhere. Than right now, right two. here. Yeah, exactly. All right. 780-218-9999. Get his up in the nasty chat as well. Uh, RCN texts it and goes, Jamie Ben's contract expires at the same time as Leon's. Just saying. Uh, Kaiser's in it says the Panino is mine and my friends go to for lunch when we're skiing. Nice. It's simply the best. That's uh, that's nice to see. Burglar Aaron says, "What's the latest on the orange and blue chrome buckets?" I mean, your Jersey guy, any um, anything on a orange and blue chrome bucket? I don't know. I'd have to ask. I do know that there's going to be a new look for the Oil Kings in their helmets next year. A subtle one, but a nice one. Well, there you go. 
Man. There's the latest on the, the Chrome buckets. Mm. The, the Chrome, what I know about the Chrome buckets is it's super expensive to make. Really? Uh, I know the Kings at one point were sending their Chrome buckets to Germany, and it was like 500 per. And then they would auction them off to kind of recoup some costs because it does it is pretty expensive, even though it's an LA Kings team. But they do have their own budgets. Uh, this text is in no name on this text. And by the way, speaking of text, we'll give you the keyword for the ESD Flyway to Vegas coming up here around uh, twelve forty today. Does making the finals or for uh, shits and giggles win a cup this year change what Leon does? The winning the cup thing is interesting. Like, if these guys deliver a Stanley Cup here to Edmonton, do they look at it and go, well, let's take the legacy to another level and deliver multiple Stanley Cups? Or do they say, here you go, Edmonton. We want a Stanley Cup. Now, for the second half of our careers, we want to try something else. I'd be really fascinated to see if they have a Stanley um, Cup in their holster when these decisions are made. No, like, if they, if they get the dangling carrot, I think they'd probably want to chase it again the next year together. Like To go again. When, the back-to-backs. Dry settle on McDavid. Nurse, Nugent Hopkins, like, they're very close friends. And if the business is good, they get what they deserve money-wise, contractually. They're all together. Everybody gets along. Like, I don't think you're disrupting that because you're like, oh, I want to be 1A instead of 1B to Connor McDavid. You know what I mean? I don't get the I, sense I see that being, being the around case. those guys for a decade now that that's how they operate. Don't they view themselves as like two peas in a pod type of thing as the, opposed to like... They're the three best yeah. friends that anyone Every, could whole, have. Yeah, yeah. And they'll never, ever, ever leave each other. And we'll... Was it, is it Something like never that. Leave it. We're the three best friends that anyone can have. We're the three best friends that anyone, And we'll never... never is, it, is it never, never, never Something leave each like other? That. I can't sing it as good to as Zach Galifianakis. Uh, Millwood's Matt is in. You might have lost this this morning. He says, I asked this this morning. Um, and it would have got li- the text line in the morning is, I mean, it's drunk. It's ridiculous. Uh, I asked this this morning, but where do you think Knobloch is in, in the coach of the year conversation, if they overtake the Canucks? I'm glad I, he put in overtakes the Canucks because I think that yeah, would legitimize good, the, the conversation. Caveat. Um, it doesn't sound like he's getting any consideration right now. Do I think he should? Yeah. But, you know, until this like recent stretch where the Flyers have two wins in their last 10, kind of pissing away a, a surprisingly good year. People were talking about Tortorella. People were talking about um, who else is having a really, really good year. Knobloch's name hasn't really been mentioned in that, though. No, but, I mean, if they come back from where, Andrew, when, when he that, took maybe. over and they come back and track down the Canucks, I mean, that there would have be to incredible. be some votes there for yeah. him. There would have to be some votes there for him. Who else was getting a lot of love earlier in the year? Did you say Talk It? Talk It would be. I mean, one. the Canucks have been first in yeah. the division all year. Nobody had them being there. Yeah. So that would be one that would certainly be in the uh, the conversation. Definitely. As well, but yeah, I would I would think if Knobloch tracks down the Vancouver Canucks, I mean, could he end up being a finalist for the Coach of I the think Year? He should get the, some. The, the storyline is there. I mean, the the Edmonton Oilers, whether it was all on Woodcroft or not, were an absolute train wreck. Knobloch took over. McDavid got going. I mean, look at the numbers pre Knobloch, post Knobloch. Ekholm, Ekholm was obviously healthier mm-hmm. after that point. Uh, but I could, uh, yeah, I could see. I've I got could time see that. for that. Uh, William R is in and says, uh, "Oh, by the way, William R, I uh, I liked your uh, message in on the lock shop today about winners at the Valero Texas Open. Appreciate that. I don't know if we got to it, but uh, I appreciate your chiming in like that." He says, "Talk it should be the favorite." And uh, Sean says you got to think Brunette in uh, Nashville gets consideration if they make the playoffs, and they they are. They, I mean, they're going to make they're the playoffs. In. They got a six point cushion right now on the St. Louis Blues. So, yeah. uh, and I know they've fallen off a little bit lately after the uh, after the streak. But yeah, guys, how much does Leon like Knobloch, and does he potentially want to go through another coaching change if Knobloch has a poor start to the season next year? Yeah. The key to keeping those two happy behind the bench you know is who not it is. Chris Knobloch. It's Glenn Gullison. They have a great they relationship with Gully, don't they? Glenn Gullison. What is it? I mean, I I, we, I golfed with Gullison in the uh, tournament this we year. We did. Oh yeah, you yeah you me Gully and uh, oh and I can't remember who the other Noah fourth Siegel. was. Yes. No. Yeah. Video guy. No, I had I had Gully the year before. Okay. Well, anyway, I was with yeah. Gully this year and. 
I can't remember who. Oh, I can't remember. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Good communicator. But like really nice, he's a really nice guy. Going. Smart man. They love him. Yes. Yeah. I guess there's a reason he survived. This Coach is like Jay's. his it's third like, coaching regime. That guy stays. Yeah. Huh. Yeah, that is kind of interesting. Mm-hmm. So as long as he's around from a coaching staff perspective of keeping the guys happy. Or is that. it his fourth co- coaching regime? Was he here with uh, McClellan slash Hitchcock for a bit? I think he was. Because I know I management up. took, you know, sent or Woodcroft was given the opportunity to go to Bakersfield. Uh, I believe Trent Yanni was moved out. Jim Johnson was moved out. He has been here since 2018. That's Todd McClellan territory. So this is... So he was here for McClellan. He Hitchcock. was here for Tip. Tip. He was here for Woodcroft. And now... And now he's here for... Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's a hell of a run, That's man. the guy. I mean, that's the guy they love, but maybe it's also the guy we should be blaming. <laughs> for what? Coach killer. No. I'm he's kidding. Very, uh, well, he, he, they obviously love him. Yeah. And he's got that head coaching experience on yep. his resume as well. And he's he's a very well compensated assistant coach. Uh, Chris Run over there says uh, Gullitson seems positive all the time. It's kind of nice to, yeah. to have one of those guys around, yeah. right? No matter what, he's just like, that's okay. He's, he's a good Let's man. go get a real nice, uh, real nice guy and much better golfer than I, as I determined uh, at the tournament Me too. prior to the season. Seven eight zero two one eight ninety nine ninety nine. Calvin Pickard will get the start tonight. Not surprising. Yesterday on two guys in goalie, we went back and forth. Gager said he would start Pickard tonight. He goes Skinner uh, on Friday, yep. and then back to Pickard in the Battle of Alberta. That sure. looks like that's what they're going to to end up doing here. He's already played Dallas this year as well. It does make a lot of sense there. Cass thought maybe you run Skinner tonight and on Friday, and then go to Pickard on Saturday. But I think this is the right call tonight, isn't it? I'm okay with it. I had no qualms. I thought it would be Skinner again, but then I'm like, nah, I probably don't want to go Skinner three during the week and then pick her on Saturday. So this is the luxury of having two goalies that you can trust and rely on. And and all of a sudden the team looks at and goes, yeah, we're going to be fine against whoever we play with Calvin Pickard or with Stuart Skinner. And uh, this sets up a, an interesting Friday, and then you should wrap up the Battle of Alberta with a win and especially try to atone for the last loss to the Flames, uh, and you could do that easily with Calvin Pickard. And I think the fact that he has beaten the Stars this season in Dallas, yeah, he, it just, he's already done it, it. I think it reassures those that might have their concerns or doubts somewhat. Well, he should Not feel completely. confident in himself. As he does, and right? as he should. He's put together a really good year. What is he, 11-5 and five now? Pretty, pretty good. Coach Mike, that's uh, Larry David, right? That's Very his much thing. so. Yeah, yeah. I'm only kind of into Curb. I'm not fully into Curb. But I love the Porno Gill episode. The Porno Gill? You remember Porno Gill? Uh, Eric, Eric's sitting out there. We got a meeting. Rick's still around. Oh, yeah. He looked at Porno Gill. It was a great episode. It was early in it. It was like episode three or four. The Seinfeld reunion episode was great. I haven't got there yet. Oh, I'm so seasons good. Seasons away. And then there's this one. <laughs> Did you ever see the little kid Greg? No, I haven't seen. Oh, Greg the yet. flamboyant young young. He's dating Anna Gastar. She's got this little kid, Greg. He's, he's a little uh, over the top. If oh, you is will. he? Yeah. Oh. It's, uh, and Larry one David of the goes funniest, at Greg pretty good. Like. I, I remember just howling, laughing I'm like this kid, just crushing. No, I think the thing with Curb is I can pop all over to episodes. It, it, like, like, there's no, to, like, there's no, like, I could just so I yeah. could go watch this one yeah. with this kid and, and yeah. laugh at it. Yeah, it's hilarious. No, that does sound real nice. Uh, Coach Mike texted it and says, Pickard is getting the start tonight. That's a great call by Knobloch. Hoping Pickard rewards his head coach with a great start. Skinner needs some rest down the stretch. And that does bring us to the next conversation here. Um, they've got nine games left. Five are against teams I would describe as Stanley Cup contenders. Okay. Right? Let's, uh, yep. Do you have the schedule? I'm pulling Bring up, up the right schedule. Now. So Dallas and Colorado. They got one with Vegas. Still got one with Vancouver. Still and another one with Colorado. Yes. So Colorado twice, Vegas, Vancouver, Dallas. Yep. Five Stanley Cup contenders. Yep. And then nothing against the Calgary Flames in the Battle of Alberta. Oh, you I, should I, have a lot against I, the Calgary Flames, especially after last night. I'm watching that game against that. I'm like, what the hell yeah. is going on Well, here? that's why I grouped the Flames into this this group of garbage teams that they play the rest of the way as well. More like, than there's, there's no middle ground. They yeah. play straight-up contenders. Yep. Or, because what is it, Phoenix twice? Uh, yep. San Jose? Yes. And Calgary. Correct. Those are the other four teams. Mm-hmm. Like, those those are duds. Now, the Battle of Alberta might those be a Battle of Alberta teams. Saturday night. I get it. I understand. Yeah. Um, 
but you've got contenders or absolute bottom of the barrel. There's no middle ground anymore. So it'll be very interesting to see the reaction from people after any losses against the top end teams or if they squeak one out against the bottom end teams. We know? had people on Monday night complaining about the three two loss where they had two goals disallowed. Cass was Cass I asked Cass, I said, How post game last night? He goes, People were angry. Yeah, they were like, This team can't do crap. They're but they were angry at the team and not the calls. Is that like they had thirty eight shots? I thought they played a pretty decent hockey game. The the goal that was called back on Nugent Hopkins, that was questionable. Yeah, I, I th- Bennington raising his his head up, looking to the the sky and the heavens, because he opened up his own. He did open up his own legs. Yeah, that was him. It had nothing to do with the blow by by Hyman. When I first saw the blow by, I was watching the I was watching the game with a buddy, and I said, "This is going to be goaltender interference." Then when they actually reviewed it, and I saw Bennington after the contact get his legs back together. And then open them on his own when and the his, puck went in. I thought, I thought to myself, self, that could be a reason for them to say, no, actually, this is a good goal. That was an admission of guilt. I did, I did think in the like, I kind of agreed with both calls. I know it was like a very anti Oiler take yesterday, but I thought I agree when, with the one against the the Toropchenko. I don't think that that was goalie interference, even with the frozen image of the stick bend. D- you can't even get with video the, review to frozen images. Like you just can't. And I said it on Monday. I'm like, you're, we're looking at, and, and Big Uke and a few others tweeted and texted in. And I was like, oh, look at the flex on that. But at the same time, it's like one or two frames from a bang bang play. And then I know Skinner's like, well, he's a tall guy, and it, it inhibited me from getting my my blocker where I wanted it to. And I, I love Stuart Skinner. I've known the kid for a long time. He's he's a young man now. But even that was a, ba- a tough sell. I, I didn't buy what Skinner was selling that that night on the, and he was giving a good interview. And and he was trying to sell it, but they got the calls right on Kane, and the Shen goal. Yeah, the Kane one was pretty much, but the one on Nugent Hopkins, that's where it was wrong. Thought it should have been a goal. Yeah. Well, I'm just interested, like, what's the uh, what's the time length on a goalie's ability to reset? Because there was a little bit of contact. I get it. I can see why they yeah. would have challenged it, but it looked to me like if if Bennington. He if Bennington's made, leg had never reclosed, he made a save. Then yes, yeah, but it, but it, yeah. I guess maybe more that I think about it now, maybe it should have been a goal. I think it should. have been. I just thought it was weird how he got his legs back together and then opened them on his own. That's an admission yeah. that any the head tilt back is an admission of guilt. He knew he screwed that play up. See, I'm with Wilson the volleyball here though. Reviews should be done at full speed. I agree with offsides 100% on that. Okay. Offside reviews should 100% be done at full speed. And if you can tell, if it's if it's a blatant offside, you can tell, go give them another look at it, but keep it at full speed. And if it's a blatant offside, then you'll be able to tell. If it's this minuscule, stupid skate blade offside, then screw it. Um, I'm interested on the goal. T- where do you think about full speed reviews on goaltender interference? Yeah, I think I'd probably be, I'd probably be game for that too. But okay, I'm okay with that. But say that there's something and it goes, the, the, the review goes awry. The argument the next day, this is a hypothetical, the argument the next day would be like, why aren't they reviewing it in slow-mo so they can get the full picture and get the call right? There's never going to be 100% satisfaction on review. Like we, and we live in this bizarre gray zone now. Um, I... I, the one part of the offsides that pisses me off beyond belief is the definition of possession. That is so stupid right now. I don't, I don't want to open up that can of worms, but I'm okay with if, if, if that's how they're going to do it. They want to go to real-time review on goalie interference. That's how they want to do it. Fine. But then don't complain. But that's an unrealistic ask. Portions of the oil stream brought to you by Popeye's Louisiana Kitchen. They got that new one that's open right down here on a, like by 178th in the old uh, Red Robins building. Looks it, great. It, it, it is open. They all look great. And you know what? They smell and they taste great too. They've got the crispy chicken buffalo wrap now available. They've also launched a loaded buffalo 
poutine. These will both oh. be available until May 26th. So you got some time, but you might as well get on this right now. Popeye's crispy chicken buffalo wrap consists of two classic hand-battered and breaded mild chicken tenders with the bold buffalo sauce paired with fresh lettuce, tomato, mild or spicy mayo wrapped in a soft flour tortilla. I would hold the tomato, but the rest of that sounds absolutely delicious. Yeah, but, hey, did you just drop a tortilla? Did I say tortilla? After I said it, I said, did I just, in my mind, I almost brought that up. You bastard. I tried to move I'm past sorry. it. I did say tortilla, didn't I? Yeah. I mean, that's how it looks. But it's not how it's pronounced. But I think in our, tortilla. like. Tortilla. 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 Okay, but what other words that have the two L's together do you say, yeah? Quesadilla. Damn, you're right, Tommy. <laughs> But they're just those foods, just the uh, just the Mexican foods. I but guess. I believe I think it is a Spanish thing where you get the two L's together and it makes yeah, the but, yeah. Like I'm reading this in English, I'm seeing soft flour tortilla, tortilla. Actually, I guess that would be. How, how does Brady Shea make, make sense? Well, Brady Shea makes no sense at all. There I've never go. understood that from the, the moment Delcovich. he was available in the draft. I was, I was like, what the hell is this? Yeah, Brady Shea doesn't make any sense. There you go. Uh, Rob says, just make all reviews limited to 30 seconds. If they can't conclusively overturn the on-ice call, then that's it. Yeah, I would love to see that clock ticking down. Like, your your video review starts now. And you get down to five, four. What's the call? What's the call? I would just love to hear the back and forth between the refs and the war room. You think the war room's ever like, man, you guys suck. Yeah. How could you not get this right, my guys? I do. I feel like that is a line of communication where the formality of getting the call right, I think that they give each other crap. That's my hunch. I would love to hear it. If I could just hear those conversations, just be like, you guys are a mess. Just like we thought. You're a mess. I like this one. The refs were out of order. The war room was out of order. The whole game was out of order. <laughs> Where's that from? That's from a movie. You're out of order. You're uh, out of order. Or is it from a show? Or from, somebody tell us that that's from a movie. Because half-baked, it's F you. The, the whole system's out. Where's that from? Where's that from? It's from somewhere. I know it's from somewhere. You're out of order. The whole system's out of order. Who, where is that from? Half-baked is like, F you, F you, F you. You're cool. Is that half-baked? F you, I'm out. Yeah. Half-baked was good. That was a good I one. I liked half-baked yeah. a lot. That was, uh, that was pretty good. The whole place is out of order. Duck Dad it's- says, uh, I was dusty in, until one trip to Puerto Vallarta. Humbling. Yeah, okay, but look at this. Like, for example, where's my, where's my read again here for... Uh, for, for Popeye's. Here we are. Popeye's crispy chicken. Oh, I know that doesn't work. <laughs> In my mind, I was imagining <laughs> buffalo is spelled with two L's. And why didn't we call what it? Is wrong why didn't we call right it Buffalo? <laughs> oh, no. That's it's my not bad. Buffalo. Yeah. Jury duty. Was it jury duty? That might have been Pauly Shore, but I think Pauly Shore might have been mocking another movie. Eric's not convinced. Justice for all. Justice. It was called. But I think the line we're thinking from was Seinfeld and it's repurposed. Yeah. Because he says the whole courtroom's out of order. Yeah. And I think Pauly Shore had it in jury duty, too. I think, not that I, well, actually, I, I'm, I was going to say I'm not a big jury duty guy, but I kind of am a big jury duty guy. The movie? I, yeah, I'm a, yeah, not jury duty in general, Tommy. I don't want to do Ooh. jury duty. Mind you, I'd be intrigued by the right case. Um, but I was a big Pauly Shore guy. I loved all of his movies, including Jury Duty, Son-in-Law, remember Biodome. Biodome. I remember Biodome. Yes, I remember Biodome. What's the one where he goes to war? In the Army Now. I watched that one. In the Army Now was okay, too. That that was with with Andy Andy Dick. Dick? Andy Dick. There's a weird guy. It was like the 1990s version of Stripes, except not near as good as Stripes. No, it wasn't. Um, Yeah, he had some good times. Now the odd time I get like a Pauly Shore video that pops up on my TikTok, and I'm like, what is this? Did you see him do that Richard Simmons like short film? Yeah, that's not bad, actually. I mean, if anybody's going to pull off Richard Simmons, it would probably be Paul. He kind of did, yeah. Yeah, yeah. He probably did. Okay. Yeah. Encino Man. Encino Man was a good one uh, as as well. Yeah, Paul, he said, Paulie, uh, Robin Mungle Fitness says, Paulie Shore did mock it in jury duty. Okay. Oh. 
That must have been the one that I was thinking of, but huge Polly Shore guy over here. Uh, Edmonton Oilers, Lions for tonight against the Dallas Stars. Keep your text messages fine in here as well. 780-218-9999. Portions of the Oil Stream brought to you by a great crew over at Popeye's. Also, the Popeye's Louisiana Kitchen Studio, obviously. Mm-hmm. Oh, glue guy's coming in for the meeting. Yeah, Do you need is. anything? You're getting an Americano. Yeah, I need one. I'm going to say, I'm going to say, <laughs> everybody's sending in their uh, coffees and stuff. I'm going to say, I'll have a chocolate milk. Oh, boy. <laughs> hey, your chocolate milk. We'll see if he actually brings it in. When you and Eric worked at different grocery stores, like, yeah. everyone does that. Yeah, I mean, did you used to dabble in Costco tires when uh, you worked at Costco? No. <laughs> 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 no. <laughs> yeah, but on the night shift at Save On, and I think because it, it was over twenty years ago, so they can't come arrest me now. But when I would work in the <laughs> when I would work in the dairy, and the night shift, if I got thirsty, I'd yeah. take a little one liter jug of chocolate milk, yeah. and just kind of open it up, put it in the dairy, and have sips throughout the night. Well, if I remember correctly, at Costco, like um, if if they made too many cookies or some were broken, they dropped a, a yeah. package of them. They put them in the in the lunchroom. Or if there was like a pizza that didn't get picked up, you just put it in the lunchroom and people got to eat them. And it was just written off, like RTV, return to vendor or whatever they they call it. I had a great conversation with Arbor Jack guy about working at Costco a couple of weeks ago. Did he work at Costco too? He worked at Costco and he's like, man, I'd get so tired and I would do go backs. And he had all the lingo down. So there. that's when you go up to the front of the store, get the things that need to be replaced? Yeah. What yeah. would happen, you'd put them all into a cart and, and then, then there'd back. be big carts, you'd take them to the back and then... You'd have the the good product that was just people didn't want or left them at the till. Uh, you get sent out. It's to like do reverse go-backs. shopping. Reverse yeah. shopping. Yeah. And he's like, I would do go back, so I would take off my name tag and pretend I was shopping. And I was like, <laughs> You young man are brilliant. And that's why yeah, you're was, in the National Hockey League yes. with a name that also makes no sense. Uh, they call him Wi Fi. Yeah. There's another name that doesn't make sense. Yeah, but at least that's a legitimate nickname. How many it's NHLers have a good nickname like Wi-Fi? Not many. Nobody nowadays, no. really. There's The NHL is sucking the big one on nicknames. They really are. They are. Like, we need to come up. That's why I love when uh, Dreisaitl was with Fogel and McLeod, because we got Clausen's Angels. Like I love Like, a legitimate that. line yes. name. Um, the the I, NHL players, like, Sid the Kid, like, that's one of the most creative names we've had in the last 20 years, yeah. and it sucked. Alex, Alex the Great. Like, Alex the Great oh, is also, I mean, come up with something... Come like, up with something. I like Deutschland Dangler. Yeah, but not many people refer to him as that outside of like this market. It's not like around the league. That's a good one, though. Yeah. Yeah, that's not a bad one. Yeah. People just they watch Tales of the North in the morning Fogel on home games and just steal a bunch of That's still yeah. kind of funny. Yeah. Anyway, speaking of the line combinations yeah. for tonight's game against Dallas, uh, McDavid between Hyman and Nuge, Dry Settle between Perry and Henrique, McLeod and Fogel together here with Evander Kane, who I did say was going to score tonight on the morning I know, show I today, heard that. so we'll see. Uh, Carrick, Brown, and Matias Yamark with Ryan as the extra forward, and then Bouchard with Ekholm, Nurse with CeCe, and Kulak with DeHarnay. The only real discussion point here, I guess, is uh, Perry with Dry Settle and Henrique, Fogel with McLeod and Kane. Um, what do you like better? What like what's the uh, what's the driving purpose in the flip? I, the, I don't know the method to the madness with Knobloch outside of he admitted or said that he changes guys due to certain matchups against specific teams. Okay, so we've established that because at first he was getting praised for keeping guys together, staying consistent with lines. Here he is, literally staying with the same lineup from the other night. And I prefer Fogel with Dreisaitl. Me too. I like Perry and Kane as wingers. And I think that they help McLeod feel a little bit more confident out there, allow and enable him to to free wheel, hang on to the puck, hang on that extra half second to a second to make that play. I'd feel confident with Evander Kane and Corey Perry on my line if I was a young centerman like McLeod. But... I'll say this, like Corey Perry, there are games where he's in the top six or gets elevated or even when he's on the third line. I'm like, that was a great play. That was a great play. Oh, that was nice. Like, he's still got it sometimes. No, not at the same level he did five, ten years ago, certainly. But there's a lot that he brings to the table. And you know what? They can switch it in game, as I've said, all season long. They have flexibility. But I would prefer Perry and Kane as a duo with McLeod down the middle. I also want to give a shout-out to Connor Brown, whose game is definitely 
coming around. You can see the confidence. He's hanging on to the puck. He's making plays. He's shooting with authority. This is the Connor Brown that we're starting to see now that we expected to come in and have an impact, a good one. With Which the is why. Here. And it's nice to see. He gets a top six look before the end of the season. You sick son of a bitch. <laughs> oh, Tommy Gazzola. My goodness. I thought we were friends. We are. We're very uh, good friends. Oh, my goodness. Uh, okay, so I, I mean, I'll just say this. I think Drysdale Henry can parry is a slow line. I, 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 don't, I don't think that's... I don't it like lumber. Like yeah, I don't like the speed it's a or lack line. thereof on Dry Settle's wings in this setup. That's why yeah, I, I don't. Of, I, I don't know why this. I don't know why this is line, happening. Right? I, I thought the know, other. Man. I thought when Fogel's up with Dry and Henrique and Perry's down with McLeod and Kane, I think they're better balanced from like different elements on all three lines. If if I if we take a step back, <laughs> look big picture, it's still three good lines to me. Yeah, no, it, it is. Like McLeod, Fogel, and Kane, compared to Wyatt Johnson, Stan Coven, and Jamie Ben, saw off there. You think? A pretty good line too. That is. I mean, Dallas good has got line. pretty deep. Stan Coven's been group. great. Johnson's just become a, a really solid young centerman in the league. Ah, let's give. I, I don't know. I don't. I don't know. I don't know the rationale outside of he noble. I'll. I'll take him for. His word, and and that's him saying we change it due to certain matchups. Okay. All right, let's see how it goes. And then he's not afraid to switch it up if he sees fit. In game. Hey, what is an Americano? It's espresso. Yeah. You wanted me to say espresso. Were you trying to catch yeah, me there? Yeah, for a while there I thought it was espresso, but espresso. I know it's espresso now, yeah. Espresso, uh, boiling water, hot water, and then uh, I, spl I splash in some milk and sugar. So it's just water mixed with espresso. Like yeah. if you just got an Americano regular, like, yeah. that's it. Strong. Huh. I didn't know. Strong. Uh, all right, let's get to your key word here for the EST flyway to Vegas. Uh, tell your friends about EST and what we're doing over here. We're giving away this trip to Vegas. All they need to do is be watching on YouTube or listening live on iHeart, on TuneIn, or at EdmontonSportsTalk.com. Tommy will be live again tonight, 6 o'clock from Hudson's West Edmonton Mall. Bourbon Street with the pregame show, post game to follow as well, following the Oilers, Oilers and Stars tonight. Today's keyword, you just have to text it in to 780-218-9999. We're giving you four chances to qualify every single day with the EST Flyaway with FlyYAG and the LV CVA. Non-stop flights over 50 destinations, www.flyyeg.com. Today's keyword on the oil stream is... Nightlife. Nice. Text nightlife. N I G H T L I F E. N I G H T L I F E. Text nightlife right now to 780 218 9999. 780 218 9999. We will give you about uh, five, six minutes to. Uh, <laughs> Eric just walked by doing the Conor McGregor walk. It kind of threw me off there for a round. Uh, <laughs> nightlife. Text Nightlife to uh, 70-218-9999. And uh, one of you will uh, go into the grand prize draw. Four more chances to qualify tomorrow. Four more chances on Friday. And another chance on uh, Saturday with Hello Hockey. With the least creative possible word oh, I know. like what's this about i was giving it to yeah. a Wadek earlier i'm like really uh, that's, that's a word like, he's like not my best work <laughs> <laughs> no kidding uh all right text nightlife to 780-218-9999 and just please tell your friends if they want to listen to edmonton sports talk and we, what we think is pretty good content they just have to say hey device Listen to Edmonton Sports that, Talk, I, and it works. Somebody was giving me the gears. They're like, yeah, but how do I like listen to it in my car? And I like picked up my phone, and I said, hey, Siri, play Edmonton Sports Talk. And two seconds later, they're like, oh, that's really easy. And I'm like, <laughs> yes. Yes, it we've is. We've made it super easy I think easy I have to do everyone. some more videos on my Twitter account showing people again how easy it oh, is. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, it's very simple. And it comes in nice and clear. Yeah, static-free since 23. Which is uh, not like our old station. Real nice, yeah. The old station was had some problems. I love some people be like, you know, I lose you guys when I go under this underpass. <laughs> I was like, I did not know that. Yeah, like back at the old station. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That would happen. Or buy a big truck. Yeah, buy a power line. <laughs> Whoops. Yeah, no, it's uh, it's a lot better and now. Then, 
then I found out how close we were to like losing the signal some days just due to just how physically up. old it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I would, I would be like, well, you know, <laughs> you're lucky there is, there's even a signal going out there. I just feel like the internet is probably better than AM radio for us moving forward. It is. And uh, nothing been, against 1260 because, God, did we love it over there, and yes, I'd still be did. there if we could. Yes, we um, But this is okay. Yeah. Uh, nightlife in Vegas. What's your favorite thing to do when it's dark in Vegas? Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Keep it clean, you Filthy dirty animals. little boy. Oh, me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. you know what? I actually behave myself pretty good in Vegas. Yeah. Like, I, I quite enjoy the pools. Uh, pool parties are cool, too. Um, I like to wander. I'm a people watcher. I don't need nightclubs. I like, yeah, yeah. I like cool bars and restaurants. There's, like, some re- really neat... Um, speakeasies that like some chill find. places yeah, to go I, yeah 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 like I, I don't need to dance i don't need to be around people that are on ecstasy. i do like to dance a little bit and i love ecstasy <laughs> so i like to that's, a, that's where you and i differ yeah. i usually sleep to about midnight hit up the ecstasy club around 3 a.m <laughs> and go all night i come out wearing green underwear and one of those flashy things around my neck oh uh, right. no mine is the new york new york new york piano bar it's one of my favorite places in the world so uh, that would definitely be my nightlife choice in Vegas. I like it. The New York, New York I, piano bar. I, it, that, I, it, there's, there's a lot of fun things to do, and uh, I like to wander around. Uh, can I get to a couple of nasty chats? Yeah, for sure, buddy. Uh, Justin of Balgoni said, espresso with hot water when answering the Americano thing. So I replied with, <clears throat> you say my wife's name right. It's Christineth. Ah, yes, that is from, give it to, wait, I got it, uh, The Other Guys. Yes, sir. God, The Other Guys is such a good movie. Great man. movie. And then uh, Mike Smith says, American GIs fighting in World War II couldn't handle the strength and taste of an espresso, so Italian baristas watered the espresso ah. down so the Americans could handle it, so espresso plus H2O equals Americano. Didn't even know. I love that. That's kind of cool. You know what other Will Ferrell movie still kills me? That kind of flies on the radar and nobody talks about. But uh, last night I was doing some work and I threw it on just in the background. But the campaign. It's a good with one. With him and Zach Galifianakis. Oh, man. And with- they're just mocking like American politics. Yeah. But he is so good as Cam Brady. I, I, I absolutely love it. I, I like when... Uh- when he looks over at him at the breakfast and goes, Welcome to the... Like he just, oh, it's so good. Marty Huggins, Marty before Huggins. he's about to get into the, the campaign, is like, they're at the kitchen table. Oh, that's a great If scene. you have anything you need to talk oh, about, God. I need to know. I Sometimes I watch Drew Carey and touch myself. Yeah. <laughs> oh. oh, and even the kid. Like, oh, the kids were hilarious. Oh, the kid, yeah. Man. Yeah, it was, uh, man, if you have not, if you have not watched the campaign, yeah. it is, it is good. It's really good. When he, I know it's so cheesy, but when he pulls up or when he's driving away and you see his face and then he rolls up his window and it's also his face. <laughs> God, that got me. That was, uh, that was really good. Uh, uh, yeah, Calvin C it. says, how about wander in the underground tunnels in Vegas? EST travel tour next time. Do you know about there's the underground tunnels in Vegas? They're, they're basically floodways. From the prohibition. No, 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 no. They're like flood because they, they get flash floods there, monsoons and stuff, and uh, uh, homeless people live down there, and it's like very dangerous. It's like a city underneath the city. No way. And then it when the monsoons hit and there's flash flooding, um, a lot of them- They got to run out. And... If, if they're like messed up and they don't yeah. wake up, they drown. Like what? It's, it's really sad. It's Damn. disturbing. Yeah. And it's very scary and dangerous. So, so don't go there. Do not wander the underground. Yeah, tunnels, don't go there. Unless you're a cop. And you're just doing your job. At that point. Cleaning up the city. Yeah. My goodness. The whole system is out of control. Uh, all right, Zach, who do we have for our qualifier here on the oil stream today? We got Dave qualifying today. Dave. All right, Dave. That's a pretty normal name. Let's go to Dave. Dave, congratulations, buddy. You're one step closer. Yeah, thanks. Appreciate it. Hey, no problem, Dave. You sound like a nice guy. Who would you bring to Vegas? Uh, my wife, most ah, likely. Okay. I knew you sounded married. Dave. I think I can tell who's married and who's not. Oh, you can just it's tell like Trev with the haircuts. I'm like... This guy's married. Oh, boy. I can okay. tell. Can I ask Dave something? Sure. Go ahead, Tommy. Dave, That's- would you wander the underground tunnels of Vegas, or would you go to an ecstasy nightclub with Dusty Nielsen? Uh, I would go with Dusty Nielsen for yes, sure. Yes, my man. I'm not sure I could 
Not sure I could drag my wife to those, but no, that's all right. We'll do it the E together. Uh, all right, man. Well, you're one step closer. Good luck. Okay. Okay, I appreciate it. All right, there you go. Tell your friends about Edmonton Sports Talk, Dave. Congrats, uh, Dave. Uh, yeah, I, I hit these underground tunnels, man. That's it's scary. Yeah, a bit. it's a, it's a real thing. Is that where the Golden Knights hide all their LTR guys? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Un- underneath T-Mobile Arena. I, uh, and I, whoever says T-Mobile Arena, stop it. I think I've called it T-Mobile Arena. You got a problem with me? Yes. When you say that. And T- when you say T-Mo- Tortilla and Espresso. Well, it's you could probably say it's not egg espresso, but it, you could mix an X in there, really. Espresso. I, it's it's like the natural. Your your brain wants to go there. But, yeah, it does, right? Because express, but it's yeah, espresso. that's exactly uh, that's exactly what it is. Yeah. Seven eight zero two one eight ninety nine ninety nine seven eight zero two one eight ninety nine ninety nine is where you can uh, chime in. Your next chance to qualify for the EST fly away to Vegas, a city with underground tunnels. Do we th- do we have any underground tunnels here? Uh, there is the one rail. Uh, like underground for the LRT under the EPCOR building that they never completed and is not part of the line. That's yeah, the only know, one I know about. You know a lot about secret I have tunnels. This, well, I, have I didn't this know this. Obscure fascination with like construction and engineering, which I know zero about outside of those weird <laughs> facts about other cities, including our own. You, like, really, with construction and engineering? Yeah, it's, it's, I like going on. <laughs> there used to be a. <laughs> Connect to Edmonton was a site. It's been shut down. Now there's another one. It's Sky Cities. And I like to see what's going on around the city and the buildings that are being uh, constructed. And uh, I I just like that stuff. I don't know why. I think it's uh, a little bit of my Nono, who was a, a carpenter slash construction worker that uh, just, I like the process of building things i don't know it's weird that's uh that's good stuff Tony. Yeah, sorry man i uh i like it hey if you want to ride with me tonight on the est parlay over at Coolbet, of course brings you portions of everything we do here at edmonton sports talk if you go to Coolbet right now click on exclusives set this little bad boy up for tonight plus 385 is the number connor mcdavid and leon dry both to have at least two points or more tonight plus the oilers win plus 385 Five. Ooh. I think the big boys have a game tonight. And they might need yeah, a crazy game. Because they were kind of, well, yeah, they were, no, they weren't quiet. That play McDavid It was made, a great play on oh that tying goal. Oh, my God, man. Yeah. Like, At high speed. On Pareko. Yeah. That was a thing of brilliance. Yeah, I think the boys pop off. Tonight. You think so? Yeah. The, the big guys. The big dogs. Dallas says, I think this is, a sp- I said this morning, I'll, I'll reiterate it again here before we wrap. I think the Oilers win tonight. And I think you're getting Dallas in a spot where they could be fat and happy. Mm. They've won seven in a row. Mm. Five, of those, five of those were against non-playoff teams. Two of them were against good teams. Yes. But five of them were against non-playoff teams. The others probably feel like they probably deserve better in that game against St. Louis. Yes. So I think this is a spot play on the oil tonight here. So McDavid and Drysaddle both the two points, which is like one really good power play, and then they generate a little bit five on five. Mm. Um, and the others to win plus 385 over at Cool bet. Tommy will be at Hudson's tonight. Bourbon Street, West Edmonton Mall for a pregame show, postgame to follow as well. Yep. Got some GCs kicking around? Uh, I do have some. I'm supposed to be getting more hopefully tonight. Nice little restock coming yeah, out. Yeah, restock's that, coming in. And then um, I'm watching to see how the team as a whole handles these next two games. If we get Big two game. spirited games, regardless of the outcome, like if they're close games and, and Edmonton's in it and we see lead changes, I think that's a sign that they're ready. Like, there were times in years past where you'd look at these next two games and be like, oh, I'm worried about these games. I look at them when I see the Oilers team and I go, I'm curious to see how they go head-to-head and and confront two really, really good teams. Should be a good one tonight. The Oilers stream, as always, presented to you by Boston Pizza. Try the square footer today. You will not be disappointed. Tommy, pregame show right here on Edmonton Sports Talk at 6 o'clock tonight. Setting yeah. up a good one between the Stars and the Oilers. Did you see the red beard? What he said? Red beard? He's in Hawaii right no, now. No, he says nine fine Irishmen in the New York, New York is the ah, best. Yes, it's great. And we could hit it up with the piano bar yeah. in a Vegas parlay. That's you and him, Dusty. I'm in. I mean, I've never known. I didn't think he wanted to go to Vegas with me. He does. But I'm in, man. I love that. That's a, that's That would be another top five choice for me. Boom. It's right across the casino. Because the New York, New York piano bar is like middle of the casino. Nine fine Irishmen just over in the corner. Whenever I go in there, I only talk like I'm in The Departed. 
a cranberry juice. <laughs> cranberry. All right, that's going to do it for uh, the Oil Stream today. I'll be back on the Nielsen Show tomorrow. I'll be back 6 o'clock tonight on the uh, Oil Stream pregame show. Tell your friends about EST. Four more chances to qualify for the EST Flyway to Vegas with Fly YG tomorrow right here. Thanks for joining us.